I basically highlight women who are doing amazing things for their community and that are somehow, some way, you know, uh, impacting, making a positive yeah. impact. So I'm just going to ask you some couple of questions. And of course, obvio, contesta el corazón. What inspired you to start your foundation, Saraj for a Purpose? I called it Saraj for a purpose in the first place because I discovered my purpose in life. That's what I believe. And my purpose in life are the kids. I've always had something, a beautiful connection with children. Any children I find in the streets or children of my friends, children always walk to me and they want to hug me and they kiss me. And I feel something, a big connection with them. So I've always wanted to work with them. But later on in my life, after I created the nonprofit and started working with them, I did remember something when I was a kid and maybe that's something that really had an influence in me. I didn't even notice it before. My mother, which I lost when I was eight, when I was a kid, she used to work with orphans too. What she would do, we were, we were being like, uh, uh, how you call that in English? It's not a shelter. Um, like you, you give the children a family before they get adopted. A, How do foster, you call it? a foster home? Yeah, kind of. Because yeah. lo que ella hacía básicamente, cuando un niño ya sabían que iba a ser adoptado, lo traía a mi casa y convivía con nosotros como hermanitos, lo ayudábamos a vestir, le enseñábamos a comer, a comportarse para que estuviera adaptado a vivir en una familia antes de irse. So I grew up with orphans and I didn't, you, you know, I didn't see them like orphans because they were like a little brother for a couple of weeks. But later on in my life, I understood what she was doing. I'm like, well, since I was a kid, those are the example that was set in my heart. So obviously I had something towards this, this type of children and knowing that I'm an orphan from a mother's side, then probably all these things made me, made me, um, give it more importance because it's important for everybody but taking the step to actually putting yourself and taking the time and putting your money into doing stuff for others even when you're not yet there and you can't but you find a way to i think it's because it's it's a priority in their in your life and they became a priority in my life does your program offer to help like how do you help well, we have different programs. I have a back to school program, which is what we do. Um, we started with only 150 kids, which is uh, something else that I want to tell people. You don't have to start big. You start with whatever you can. And then you go and you grow if you can also. But whatever, even if you help one person, that person, you're making a big change in their lives. So I started with education. I started with one orphanage that had 150 kids. I used to, um, the back to school program is giving them their backpacks and all school supplies so they can go back to school. But at the time when I had only one orphanage, I also used to pay school for them. And we have a program for Christmas, which is, um, of course, a beautiful Christmas party for the orphans with games, with celebrities. We sing for them. We dance with them. Everybody gets a gift. It's a, a way of having them smile. Then during the year, I visit them. Well, not this year, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, but uh, usually I visit them every couple of months and I just bring people sometimes with me, um, people that like art or that want to teach something to the children. And we just have a class, you know, a random class just to play with the children, but teach them something. Yeah. I give them books. I give them a lot of stuff. What, but I think the most important thing I'm giving them is the fact that they know that someone cares to them and that someone loves them and someone is constantly coming back to them. Because when the first, the first time I went to an orphanage, I remember they spoke about another celebrity friend of mine, I'm not saying the name, that used to go there and they like, oh, this person came. I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. But then that person never came back. And I felt like the, when the kids were talking about that person, like they felt disappointed that the person never came back. And it's not that the person don't love them. It's that probably the person just went to other orphanages to probably give them a little love. But when you're constant in what you do, when those kids, I see, I saw them grow, grow up. There's some of them that are 24 years old now. They're old and we still talk. And I see them when I go to Haiti and they're my kids. I don't know how, cause I'm not old enough, but they're my kids. <laughs> You know, and the, the way they grow up with the mentality they grow up, knowing that people care for them, it's already making a change inside them. So it's not only the Christmas gift we give them or the tools to go to school, which are obviously it's great, 
but it's the fact that you spend time with them and you show them there's ways in life and that they're worth a lot. I have a, a dream. I want to build a technical professional school for them. Oh. Um, I've been saying that for a couple of years. Now I finally have the land. I'm trying, I'm making sure all the paperwork is ready. And most, most times I do things on my own. I start and then I ask for help. I don't really go ask for help to build something because I want people to see, well, if she did this on her own, she can do more if we help her. You know what I mean? So I wanted to create a technical professional school for orphans because at least in Haiti, orphans they kick them out of the orphanage when they're 17. They're not done with school, most of them. They're not going to university. They know they're supposed to eat and they need a place to sleep, but they don't know how to get that because they don't know how to work. So what are we doing to our children? We're actually not helping them at all. At all. So I want to make sure once they're 13, besides school, they go to, a, to my place, which is a technical school, will be free for them, where they can learn something, a tool so they can work in the future and have something so they can be productive in their lives and how many students would your place be able to i guess house or well i think i think uh, the same way i started this nonprofit, it's probably going to start smaller until i can grow because i don't want to say i mean if i could i would take all the children in the world that's my you know but i have to be realistic the first thing is building the place then organizing all the classes and making sure it's a place that can be sustainable until before I bring too many children because I don't want to build something that later I have to close. So that's why I, I think it takes time, but I'm making so sure I'm you work your way up. Yeah. I'm yeah. making sure I'm working the way up. So when it's built and it's strong, then I add more children and add more children. I'm probably going to start offering the classes to only one orphanage. Then I'm going to bring a second one and eventually it'll go up. So all of them will have access to it. If someone wanted to get involved and wanted to, you know, contribute or volunteer, how can someone get involved with that cause? Well, um, the nonprofit Saraj for a Purpose has an Instagram page. You can always go there and see what we're doing. You can go to our webpage, sarajforapurpose.org, or you can send me an email on sarajforapurpose at gmail.com if you're interested. If you DM us, we also answer. So you can go to Instagram if it's easier for you and DM and we can let you know when we're doing next about next activities so you can know how you can get involved. For now, we do not know what those are going to be because the reality, what, mostly we're going to be sending stuff to the kids. We're not going personally to see the kids because of everything that's happening. But right. maybe if, you, yeah, if there's a way you can help in any kind of way, if you, have, if you think you can deliver masks to the kids in Haiti, or if you think you can offer them something to protect themselves from the pandemic, well, we can make that happen and we can give it to the kids for you. So if there's a way you feel you want to give them something and you want to do it to us, we are here for that. So Saraj for a Purpose and Instagram, Saraj for a Purpose at Gmail if you want to contact us on, G- on email. Beautiful. And then, of course, I have to end it with asking you, what inspires you, Saraj? What inspires you to do all of this? What inspires you to be who you are and, 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 and give? I, my biggest inspiration is my mother. She is not physically with me, but she is within me. I, everything I do in my life, I question myself, would it make her proud first? And I, I live by her example, even though it's only a memory that I have of her. But I would say I'm a person that finds inspiration in every little detail in the world. I'm a very positive person. Like when, where you see a problem, I don't really see a problem. I see, okay, I have to learn to find the solution. I can't say what are my bigger obstacles because I never, not because I didn't have them. I never saw them up as obstacles. I'm like, okay, this is part of the process and I'm getting through it. And that's how I live my life. That is my philosophy. I just embrace myself. I believe in myself. I work hard every day. I believe that you have to be determined. You have to be disciplined and you have to, you know, maintain yourself, um, prepare for any opportunity that could arrive to you. Basically, that's how I've been successful in life. Siraj, beautiful words to end this interview with. Thank you so much. I am honestly inspired by you. I love your story.